With a Wager Talk One Day Power Pass, you receive every play from every betting consultant for one full day at the ridiculously discounted price of just $149. What's better than spending the day watching and following a great slate of games? Watching, following, and winning those games. Get every Wager Talk expert and every game they release for that day. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome in and uh, well, happy Tuesday to you. It is championship week, college football, and uh, we got a whole lot of very interesting championship games coming up uh, throughout uh, the week here. We're going to start with the MAC, and we're going to break some of these games down and uh, including Oklahoma State Baylor, and we'll even mix in a little Pac-12 for you here over the next 25 minutes or so, and we'll do it. Uh, with three of our favorites here on the Tuesday crew of College Football Daily, including Adam Trigger in the house, uh, Dave Koken's tail, and uh, we also have uh, <laughs> Brian Leonard in the house here, and a guest. We will have a guest appearance here. Uh, and Trigg, uh, welcome in here, my, uh, my friend. I know it is $2 Tuesday, and I heard there's a rumor right now that you might know who... Uh, the $2 handicapper is at Wager Talk. Yep, so the $2 capper this week is me. Uh, it's a, a college football play. It's up now uh, for 2 bucks. And anything else I have today, I'm going to post for free. So I already put a 4% college basketball play out. Uh, you can get it on my Wager Talk page for free. And if I add any others, uh, I'll post them for free as well. All right, very good. Uh, Brian Leonard locked in, uh, loaded here. Is it NHL? Is it college basketball? Is it NBA? Where uh, where are you looking tonight here? Yeah, I've been on a pretty good run here other than Saturday. Uh, one bad day of the week. Uh, I've got two plays up right now in hockey, and I've got five plays up in college basketball currently over the last month, number two on the site in hockey profit and college basketball profit. So uh, very excited to continue on in those areas all right good to go and uh dave i know we, we just talked to you in the college basketball show is uh is it just one college basketball play tonight for you yeah and if you want that just watch the college basketball show um yep. because it's on it's on the show uh i've got a couple of football plays up for the weekend uh that i thought i'd better play early for line value purposes and I've got one hockey game tonight, which is a best bet. And uh, that's the only thing you got to pay for right now, I believe. So uh, let's get to it. Let's go, guys. Let's dive in here. We're going to start. Well, where else? A little matching here. Let's see what we got, Robert. Boom. Kent State taking on Northern Illinois in this matchup here. Uh, Ford Field, I believe, is where this game will take place. 72 is an opening total, minus two for Kent State as a favorite. This is going to be noon Eastern time here, guys, in just a couple of days. And, uh, Dave, let me come back to you here. Kent State, Northern Illinois, MAC championship. Uh, you got a feel for this one way or the other? Well, I mean, as of now, unless something changes, Rocky Lombardi's out uh, for Northern Illinois. Now, that's not. I don't want to mislead anybody. Rocky Lombardi is not real good. Okay, he's erratic. He uh, he throws the ball to the other team more than he should. But his replacement uh, in the game this past week, and it was Ethan Hampton, who had seen, I think, one snap all season. And even though they're way behind in the game, they still just, they didn't throw. I mean, they only threw the ball 10 times the entire game. He was four for 10. So it would appear they might have a problem at quarterback. now. The info I'm seeing, and the Mac can be sketchy on this, so, you know, you can always buy out of it. But the info I'm seeing is that Lombardi's out till mid-December. He is out for this game. Not questionable, not doubtful, out. That would appear to be a problem for them. In the regular season meeting, it was at Kent State, so there was definitely a home field advantage there. But Northern Illinois got out to a real nice start in that game. They were up, I think, 14-3, and then... 21 10 or something like that and then just got run over completely run over I, they scored 47 points i don't know where they're going to get those points from here if lombardi's not on the field 
and they've got a quarterback that they, they don't think can throw the ball. And I'm basing that on what they did last week. And now, the, 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 the asterisk there is that the game didn't mean anything to Northern Illinois. Mm. So maybe they kept them under wraps and just said, let's just get through this, not get anybody else hurt. Uh, we're in the championship game anyway. So it was kind of a nothing game for them. So, you know, maybe, maybe that, maybe uh, a hammock's keeping things under wraps. But I added three points uh, to Kent State here because of apparently the absence of Lombardi. That makes my line six in the game. So at three, I got to play Northern Illinois. Or excuse me, I got to play Kent State. Kent State minus the three. Kent State minus the three. It has gone up. You know, Brian, I'll. They both very profitable to the over uh, this season, mostly because both don't play any. <laughs> they play tag football on defense, yeah. so they're not interested in playing defense. They just want to outscore you here, uh, and this is indoors, so they're not going to have to worry about the uh, you know the MAC weather here this time of year. So it's kind of hard to look at anything but to expect points here, isn't it? Well, if the quarterback situation is flushed out, uh, I did want to point out that. They made that comment. I didn't think anything, last week's game meant anything, and it showed. Is uh, you know they lose to Western Michigan, forty-two to twenty-one. I look at this game a little bit differently. Um, Kent State has won the turnover battle eight times this year, and yet I believe they're only six and six against the spread. That's not a team I'm looking to lay points with. You've got a Kent State team, as as Dave mentioned, they were a three and a half point favorite at home against Northern Illinois. Now they're on a neutral lane, virtually the same thing as the line is up to three. So that may tell you who the quarterback is for Northern Illinois here. But this Kent State team, you know, they you take a look at what they've done at home, undefeated on the season at home. But on the road, the only two teams that they were able to beat on the road were Ohio and Akron, uh, two teams that I bet against virtually the entire season. So I'm not impressed with what they've done on the road. Northern Illinois coming into the season, was the one team in this conference I thought had some value. I thought we can go against Ohio and Buffalo and have success. So the Mac's been very good to me this year, and it's been very good to me over the last 40 years. So um, I'm on the other side, as Dave here, catching that number of three. Um, to me, Northern Illinois is the team to bet on because Kent State, I just don't trust them. And when you're talking about bad defenses, they're one of the worst in college football. I know the offense can score at will. We'll have to see how this goes. If it does become a high-scoring game, I think Dave's probably going to win. I think Northern Illinois has to take the air out of the football a little bit here to have a chance to defend this Kent State offense. We'll see. It's At this point, the information out there on the quarterback hasn't been confirmed as far as I could tell. I, I pay for uh, some good information for injuries, and they're not listening to anything. So um, unless somebody's got some information that I don't know about, um, you know, we'll we'll go with what we have here, but I prefer taking the field goal with the uh, with Northern Illinois here. All right, going to take the field goal, Northern Illinois. And by the way, guys, make sure you're following uh, all three of these gentlemen on Twitter because as information comes available, they will certainly uh, share that with you throughout the week as we head into these games. Now, Adam, I know you are the two dollar handicapper, and I believe. Your best bet has something to do with this game. So for two bucks, guys, you can head over to wagertalk.com right now and get his entire write-up on what he thinks of this MAC championship. But we're going to move on here, and let's do it to the Pac-12, Robert. Uh, round two, Oregon taking on Utah just a couple of weeks apart. Opens up with Utah as a field goal favorite 60. As an opening total here, guys, and uh, boy, you know, we talked about this game last week, uh, Adam, uh, and we said, you know, what is, what are we going to get from Oregon? Is it going to be a letdown after that beatdown, or are they going to suck it up, beat Oregon State, and get ready for this rematch? Well, here's our answer. Now, the question is, did they learn anything? Do you, do you trust them in this rematch against Utah? Yeah, no, I, I trust them here, and last week, you know, it's funny because when we talked about that game on the show, uh, I kind of liked Oregon State. I thought even a, it even might make my card. And as we got to Friday and Saturday, I saw the way the line was moving, and I just I ended up staying off of it because I, ha I just had a feeling Oregon was going to show up, and they did. And I have a feeling they're going to show up here. 
One of the big reasons I, I feel that way is because they are getting healthy and they're getting healthy in particular on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, Mario Cristobal came out, said Noah Sewell, Sewell, linebacker is back. Mikhail Wright, cornerback, is back. And I think one of the big reasons they got absolutely run out by Utah a couple weeks ago is, you know, the, the injuries specifically on the defense were kind of keeping Kayon Thibodeau into, you know, not really giving him the freedom to, to go in and sort of be the game changer that he can be. The other issue for Oregon in that game uh, was just, it was just a disastrous performance from the Ducks. It was mistake after mistake. Uh, and I think a lot of that, though, has to do with the atmosphere at Rice Eckley Stadium and how tough of a place that is to play. I've talked about it with Utah all year. They're a team I'm happy to back them at home anytime they're playing at home. Under Kyle Whittingham, they have an unreal home record. I've been to that stadium for that night game before um, on Saturday night. Uh, it's an awesome atmosphere. But this is not in Salt Lake City. This is in Las Vegas on a neutral field. Oregon's getting some guys back, so they're getting healthier. And last week, they started to sort of look like the Oregon that we, you know, kind of have expected them to be, um, and not so much the team that got blown out by Utah. We have in-season revenge here, which is something I like to look at. So, yeah, I, I think on a neutral, getting three points with Oregon here is pretty good value. Uh, that's the that's the way I'm leaning in this game. I like the Ducks. All right, likes the Ducks to uh, to get it done here. Uh, Dave, what do you think here? You think uh, Oregon's got uh, what it takes to be able to come back in this one? Yeah, look, um, I'm impressed with the way Oregon got off the mat after a dream crusher loss. I mean, that was a huge loss to Utah. They get absolutely killed in the game. And playing the Civil War against Oregon State, and I think the game probably means more to Oregon State, Going in, I was very impressed with the way Oregon was able to gather themselves. Final score, to me, was a little mis misleading. I thought Oregon really controlled the game. They're going to be motivated for this. Uh, I mean, they got their teeth kicked in uh, at, uh, at Salt Lake City. And I don't think I'm going to bet it because I do have Utah as the better team. But I think you're going to get a, a, a big effort out of Oregon in this game. And I don't want to lay the points. Utah could relax a little bit. I mean, listen. They beat them so handily a couple of weeks ago. I don't know that they're going to be able to avoid being a little complacent here. Mm -hmm. So on that, maybe I'd lean to Oregon, but it's not going to be a bet for me. All right, leaning uh, Oregon. You know, uh, Brian, if we take a look back uh, preseason, I believe Oregon was the favorite um, to win the Pac-12, and it uh, was about uh, plus 250 somewhere in that ballpark. Washington was supposed to be a team that was supposed to compete for that. Huh. It didn't work huh. out all that well, did, did it? So here's Utah in this spot. They were about 14 to 1. Who do you like? Uh, who do you like to win the Pac 12 here in this game? Yeah, Utah was a team that I think a lot of people thought highly of coming into the season. And they were just playing terrible the four, first four games, losing every game by at least four points to the okay. spread, going two and two, losing to San Diego State which we turned out to be a pretty good team, and BYU. But they're a lot better team now than they were when they played Oregon, or excuse me, before the uh, beginning of the season there, and they got off the schneid. Uh, they took it to Oregon in that game. And if you're an Oregon fan, if you're an Oregon player, all you had to do was win out, and especially in retrospect with losses by Ohio State and some of the others, you'd be playing in the national championship. Uh, this cost them this game against Utah cost them the chance to play in the national championship. So not only are they playing with in-season revenge, short in-season revenge, because they just played them a couple of weeks ago, the game means a lot to Oregon. This is very important to the Oregon players to come out here and get some revenge here. Uh, the line in that game was played in Utah. Utah was a minus three-point favorite. Utah's got, as was pointed out, one of the strongest home fields in college football. Now they're basically laying the same thing on a neutral site with a fast track, which is Oregon, that, that's Oregon's uh, game, playing on the fast track. So I prefer the Oregon side here. I think they uh, get that revenge, and I'm surprised the line is where it is. I It would not surprise me if this comes closer to pick them as, uh, as the week goes on here. Amazing, right? You get rid of Charlie Brewer, and then voila, 
Cameron Rising, welcome uh, to Utah. I didn't notice, but under Kyle Whittingham, Utah's never won the Pac-12 here. So this should be a very interesting uh, round two there between Utah and Oregon this weekend, guys. And now let's head over to the Big 12 if we can, Robert. Yep. Baylor, round two, taking on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Oklahoma State just under a touchdown uh, favorite to open up here. Total was uh, 49. And talk about two teams in which uh, preseason nobody saw being in this situation. Oklahoma State somewhere around 14 or 15 to 1 to win it. Baylor was a 50 to 1 shot to win the Big 12, and yet uh dave aranda and company look at where they are here right now with an opportunity to take down the oklahoma state cowboys so uh bry let me come back to you in this one here oklahoma state rolling can they continue to do it i really like both of these teams they've been very good to me this season um makes it hard to play against either one of them if you if you're like a normal better and somebody has uh, been very good to you you hate to go against them <laughs> but these are two teams that I think a lot of sharp people made a lot of money on. Um, the only concern for myself is Oklahoma State had that game against Oklahoma that could have gone either way, uh, and they win that game 37-33. to 33. That That's their Super Bowl, basically. That's probably more important than this game is. We'll see what happens. But um, the concern I have from a Baylor standpoint is when they played Oklahoma State earlier this year, they played at the Cowboys Stadium. They lose that game 24-14. to 14. He had 14 less first downs, 121 less yards, and they had a plus three turnover margin. Very often, or you get a plus three turnover margin, you're going to win that game, you're going to cover that game. To lose by the spread by six points in that contest is somewhat concerning here. Uh, maybe it's a matchup situation, I don't know. But uh, I wanted to fade Oklahoma State after that Oklahoma game. The line opened, I believe, six and a half, and it's been bet down to five. I think it's the right side, but unless I could get six, if it comes back to six, I think I'm a buyer on Baylor. But unless it comes back to six, I'll probably be sending this one out. All right. And I don't know, uh, Adam, have you heard uh, what the uh, status of the quarterback for Baylor is? Had a bit of a uh, hamstring tweak there. Does it even matter uh, if he is or isn't the quarterback in this game? Uh, I think it matters, and as far as I can see, he's going to play. It looked like they held him out of the Texas Tech game as a precaution because he was warming up, and I, I guess he was there. Uh, but they, it looks like they made a last-second decision to, the, to just go with the backup. So he should play. I think that's probably why the line initially dipped uh, from 6.5. It was all the way down to 4 at, at some point yesterday. Um, and then it, and it looks like it got bought back up. I saw 5.5 right before we came on air. Uh, I agree with Brian. I, I think six is kind of key, but I, I like this. Ba I actually like both of these teams, but I, I Baylor's been undervalued all year, and I've done well with them this year. So I, I definitely want to try to figure out a way to take them here. And I actually think this could be, even though it's the Big 12 championship game and there's a potential spot in the college football playoff on the line, I wonder if this is a little bit of a letdown spot for Oklahoma State after finally beating Oklahoma in the fashion they did la last week. Uh, Baylor, they're going to—they're obviously the underdog here. I feel like they've kind of been playing with like a nothing-to-lose mentality for a while now this season, so the pressure's probably on Oklahoma State here. Um, but I really like Baylor. They have a balanced attack. They can run the ball. You know, they, there's no real like liability on offense. I, I want to say their pass and rush output is almost dead even. And... You know, Oklahoma State is outstanding defensively, uh, so they're they're obviously, you know, the, they're probably the superior team on paper. But I like, again, just from the last game we spoke about, I like the fact that these two teams have played. Um, it, it gives Baylor a chance to make adjustments. And it, it just, the, the first game, Oklahoma State kind of dominated. They only won by 10, even though they did dominate the stat sheet. I think the first downs were like 24 to 10, if I remember correctly. So... I think Baylor can make some adjustments here. I think six is kind of a key number, but I, I see the Bears hanging around, and, and I lean Baylor with the points here. All right, leading Baylor and the uh, and the points. Uh, Dave, I remember it was a week three or four when Oklahoma State went to uh, Boise State on a uh, Friday night, and boy, 
Woo! <laughs> what a difference a couple of minutes makes there. But here they are, Big 12 and uh, playoff uh, implications uh, here for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Do you think they can run the table? Yeah, the Big 12 should have moved this to a night game. Mm. Um, they're not doing Oklahoma State any favors because if Oklahoma State, you know, if Cincinnati gets beat, uh, if Alabama gets beat, if Michigan gets beat, if any of those things happen, Oklahoma State could go out there at night and uh, score a big win and maybe get themselves into the playoff. They're playing at nine in the morning. Um, I don't. I, seriously, if I'm the Big Twelve, I don't move the game to a night game. It's like give give our team the best chance to make a statement. But they didn't, and uh, I made the line in this game four and a half. I, I have no idea what to do with it. I mean, Oklahoma State should have killed Baylor in the first game. Should have won by thirty, and the fact they only won by ten, and it wasn't a great spot for Baylor. Uh, that may get me to the Baylor side a little bit. I also think they've got a better coach to be cut out. I, Aranda's done a phenomenal job uh, with this Baylor team. So I think there are some edges uh, for Baylor. Not enough for me to play it, though. Oklahoma State is the better football team. I think we're just glad that we have a Big 12 championship game back because, yeah, that was nice of them to pull it back in 2010 then realized, oops, this wasn't a great idea here, guys. But it is. Noon Eastern time kickoff there. Oklahoma State taking on Baylor. So there you got it. You got a MAC championship. You got a Pac-12 championship, Big 12 championship here. And uh, I'll come to you there, uh, Adam, up top. Uh, and reminder, guys, $2 Tuesday right now, his best bets uh, in, uh, in the Northern Illinois Kent State game is available right now, $2. Just head over to wagertalk.com, visit Adam Trigger's page, and grab that play, get the full write up. You'll know exactly where he stands on the MAC championship right now for two bucks. Of the other games here, Adam, is there one uh, you might be leaning towards a little more than the others? Oh, yeah. No, I, I like Oregon. Um, I haven't played it yet, but it's on my short list for the weekend. Uh, I think Oregon plus three is great value. I agree with something Brian said earlier in the show. I actually expected this to be more, closer to pick. Um, and I'll probably lock it in soon because I, I think it could trend that way. Uh, Oregon is healthier than they were when these two teams met a couple weeks ago, specifically on the defense, uh, which I think is is you know big because uh, they were just not very good defensively in that first matchup. Uh, they also made a ton of mistakes, which I think they're going to clean up a little bit uh, now that this is on a neutral field in Las Vegas and not in Salt Lake City uh, in a big spot on Saturday night, which the first meeting was. So. Uh, I just expect Oregon to play better. I thought they played great last week. And like Dave said, I think the final score of that Oregon State game was a little misleading. Oregon dominated that game pretty much from start to finish. Uh, so, yeah, Oregon plus three, great value here. I think Oregon's the better team. I like the in-season revenge angle as well. Uh, and I'll take the Ducks plus three in the Pac-12 title game. All right, there you go. Ducks plus three. Uh, oh, no, Brian, looks like uh, Mario Cristobal is now the Notre Dame head. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me that we're going to get some some craziness still before these games. <laughs> Which one are you looking at? Surprise me. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I, I I like all three of these underdogs, and uh, I I agree. I think Oregon being on the key number, which I don't think is going to be there later on in the week. I think that would put that a little bit higher up the uh, the board for me. I like the three dogs, but we're catching a three that I think will probably be one and a half or two. And uh, in the long run, that'll that'll uh, make you some money. So let's go with Oregon in that major revenge for, like I said, a possibility of playing in the national championship if they would have won that game last time. So it means a lot more to them than it does to Utah, although I'm sure Utah obviously wants to win the conference championship. Yeah, well, that's uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there are some uh, Utah future tickets out there at 51 going, no, please. Uh, Dave, what do you think? Which one of these uh, might you be leaning towards? Well, I... I'm going to go with Kent State. Um, now, a note on this, though. Now, the information I'm getting is that Lombardi's out. Uh, if that is inaccurate, and uh, Mac injury reports are, they're the worst. They are the absolute worst in the country. Um, so you, we could find out later in the week Lombardi's playing. If he is, I'm just going to buy out of it. <clears throat> because, <coughs> excuse me, I'll buy out of it, sacrifice a little vig, 
but I can always play like a 1% money line on Northern Illinois if he's in the game and cover it that way. Uh, but for now, based on the information that Lombardi isn't playing and the fact that Hampton didn't look good at all, uh, I will go with Kent State minus three. All right, leading the Kent State minus three. Keep an eye on that, uh, guys, as far as Lombardi's uh, status for kickoff there. Uh, and there you got it. But don't forget, also, best bets are locked and loaded up at the site there for these guys, including the $2 Tuesday uh, play there from Adam Trigger, which is on that game there, the MAC Championship. Head over to wagertalk.com and get that, guys. Lock it in for just 2 bucks right now. Get his write up, get his plays there. Don't forget, Brian Leonard also locked and loaded here uh, across the sports betting landscape, as is uh, Dave Koch. And don't forget, Dave's already put up uh, one of his college basketball plays on the college basketball tip off show a little earlier. So make sure you check that out on our YouTube page. And then, of course, hit that bell in the upper right hand corner and make plans to come back tomorrow. We'll take another look at three more championship games coming up and coming your way this week. So much to get to here. It's going to be a great week. In the meantime, on behalf of Adam Trigger, Brian Leonard, and Dave Koken, guys, best of luck with your plays tonight. Come back and join us again tomorrow for another edition of College Football Daily. Good luck. We'll talk to you then. With the Wager Talk One Day Power Pass, you receive every play from every betting consultant for one full day at the ridiculously discounted price of just $149. What's better than spending the day watching and following a great slate of games? Watching, following, and winning those games. Get every Wager Talk expert and every game they release for that day.